Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today for actually my first uh, public bill signing of this session. And it's significant that uh, the first public bill signing will be the priority item that I had on the agenda that's also been a priority of the legislators, and that is a $50 million tax cut for low-income Arkansans. Uh, I wanted to recognize uh, the President of the Senate, Jonathan Dismang, uh, Speaker of the House, Jeremy Gillum. Uh, thank you for your leadership on this and all the other members that are here. And I know that uh, uh, the majority leaders, uh, Senator Hendren, uh, carried this bill on the Senate side, did a masterful job. And then Matt Pitch, who is uh, risk uh, life and limb to get here in time, will shortly be here, I think. I think he's coming up the stairs, but I want to recognize him as well that carried this in the House side. First of all, this benefits 650,000 Arkansans that will benefit from this tax cut with a reduction in their rate with more money in their pocket. Let's just absorb that for a second and think about the impact for 60, 50, 650,000 Arkansans. Secondly, uh, this is a boost to the economy because those Arkansans will spend this money. And thirdly, it gives us a more competitive rate. Earlier this week, I was in El Dorado for a significant jobs announcement with Conifex, a Canadian lumber company that has taken over the old Georgia Pacific Mill that has been uh, vacant or idle for 10 years. They're spending $78 million. They're creating uh, over, over 140 jobs uh, in this mill site. But as they were making the announcement, they said, we evaluated the different sites and the big mark against Arkansas was the income tax rate that was higher than the other region. Now, we still won that competitive environment, but we it emphasized the point that our tax rates is a factor in industrial recruitment. Uh, I also wanted to mention before we sign it that this is the most conservative and responsible tax cut that we can have and continue down the path of lowering our rates. It is $50 million. There were many that wanted higher level of tax cuts. Uh, there uh, were many other different tax bills. We focused on this and said this is what we can afford and we will put it in the second year of the biennium so that we are making sure that we are responsible in our path toward tax cuts. And so uh, I like where we are on this. I'm delighted with the legislative support for this. And so uh, with that, uh, I'll be uh, happy to uh, sign this bill. One other thing, and this is really a, a good balance between the executive branch and the legislative branch, that uh, I proposed this tax cut. It was embraced, but they said we want to do more. And so uh, in talking with them, uh, they uh, said, let's form a tax a task force, a legislative-driven task force that we can look down the road at future reforms, efficiencies, simplification, and fairness in our tax code. And I applaud them for that addition. Uh, that's a part of the bill, and that will be a part of what we create uh, by this legislation. So with that, uh, I'd like to ask uh, the sponsors and legislators to come over. Man, make it up. I thought he was outside. He must be having a hard time finding a parking spot. Senate bill has been signed. Oops, let me get one. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Great job. And, uh, there we go. Thanks, sir. And uh, 
and then we'll sign the House bill. somebody important like this. I'll be happy uh, with that to uh, take any questions. Governor, you talked about the responsible path forward. Uh, uh, there's been discussion in, in both houses, uh, uh, debate about, about that path. Do you feel comfortable where we are in terms of revenue coming in, where the economy is? Uh, uh, just, just uh, elaborate on it. I do feel comfortable where we are uh, as a state in terms of our economic growth, uh, the uh, foundation of our uh, economy in this state, the diversification of it. I feel comfortable, enthused, and excited about the future, uh, both from a budget standpoint and from a job standpoint. Anytime you have a 3.9 percent unemployment rate, anytime you're making jobs announcements, you're creating jobs. Uh, there's an excitement in this state, uh, and, and I feel comfortable with that and excited about it. In terms of the uh, state budget, uh, because projections are uh, not as scientific as we would like, there's an art form there, uh, you always want to be somewhat cautious. And I'm mindful of the history of Arkansas and the importance of a balanced budget, of a conservative budget, and for all those reasons and for the, uh, the irregular month-to-month -month reports, I said, let's take a conservative approach to it this year, 50 million. Uh, we all felt comfortable with my economic advisors, with Director Walther, in saying 50 million, but let's put it on the second year of the biennium, which is a $25 million hit. We feel more than comfortable with that. Secondly, uh, please note that uh, the other conservative and responsible approach was when it came to providing the tax cuts that's still going through the uh, system for the military retirees that we wanted to make sure that was paid for. Uh, so we didn't say, well, we're just going to absorb that. We have to pay for it. We have to close off exemptions. And so there are many that, uh, not many, but there were some that were saying, we don't like to have those offsets. We don't like to have a paid for we just want to absorb that uh, like uh, in, into our budget. That's not a conservative, responsible approach, and we took that approach. Uh, I feel very comfortable with it, and uh, uh, I, I think without any doubt we could absorb this, and these will be economic drivers for our state. In your discussion, discussions, private discussions with lawmakers about the task force, has it, have you used any numbers in terms of what what the aim is of the task force, 200 million, 400 million, 500 million? Uh, no. Uh, the only thing, and I've said this publicly, not to, to the, just to the task force, but publicly, I've said my long-term goal is to get the rate down in Arkansas to 5%. Uh, that's, uh, uh, so I want to keep the focus on the income tax rate in this state. And if you lose that focus, you're you're talking, then you start going down the path of opening up more exemptions. And uh, you're, you're losing the competitive uh, nature of what we want to do in our tax cuts and the ability to flatten uh, that income tax rate. And so that's the focus I've said publicly. The 
task force is so critical to what we're doing uh, because they realize now with this session how difficult it is to close off three exemptions. And the way you have, to, the way we can uh, reduce that tax rate is, is broadening the base, closing off exemptions, uh, and, and then also, you know, long term, uh, there, there could be some uh, changes in federal tax code that will give us some opportunities in Arkansas to adjust. So they have a huge responsibility, and I think we've seen that it's a good vehicle for change in the future. It helps us to build a consensus from the legislature, the public. Uh, I know that they understand the, the transparency of it, and so that builds not just legislative support, but public support. And, and so uh, I'm pleased with uh, their commitment to it and that opportunity. The uh, Senate Regulatory Tax Committee advanced uh, Senator Biles' DE Harris bill, a bill trying to block the big eggs on the excess taxes here. What do you think about the legislation? Do you see that revenue as maybe a way to help pay for some of these compacts and changes? There's, uh, yes, I. I need to look at that more clearly uh, and, and that legislation that Senator Files has introduced. But it's my understanding, I was told today, that uh, Amazon is starting to pay sales tax in every state except for five. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, we're not the last ones uh, to have that fairness in terms of, of that uh, big marketplace and, uh, uh, and uh, the market that Amazon has. Uh, so. I've, I've been an advocate of e-fairness. I think you can see a lot of different reasons in sluggish sales tax collections, but it's not reflective of our economy. It's reflective of spending habits uh, of citizens. And so we need to have that fairness in the marketplace. That's a longer term project. My commitment is for if we have a significant infusion of new money from uh, the e-fairness initiative, then that needs to be put in a lockbox for income tax reductions. And that is a significant amount as you look at what's happened in other states. That gives us the opportunity to make a substantial uh, progress on uh, that goal of reducing the rate. Just, just to make sure I say that, did you generally support the idea of fairness, but specifically on the legislation you want to take a look at first? Correct. Because I think of e-fairness at the federal level that makes a standard nationwide uh, because you don't want to have islands and, and making it uh, uh, difficult to recruit uh, that technology economy in this state. I will look at his bill. I have not made any uh, statement in position in regard to that. So in seeking a second term, will you part of your campaign platform be a reduction of the top income tax rate? Well, that is uh, the goal of my first term, and I suspect because of the heavy lift that it is, it will be a, an objective in any second term. And I'm focused on this legislative session, as you know, and there'll be more announcements down the road in that regard, but uh, that's a long-term project that I have a long-term commitment to. What would, has anybody put, put pencil and pen and figured out uh, if you had a 5% rate, what that would cost the state? Yes, there are numbers for that. Uh, there's, uh, they, they look at it in terms of what it costs for every uh, one-tenth of a point reduction in the rate, so we absolutely have those numbers. Uh, uh, it's a significant uh, hit on our treasury part. No, uh, I, don't, I don't have that in front of me. We're glad to get that to you, but I just don't have that. Should the EITC be considered in future sessions? Or by the task force? I'm sure that that will be an issue that will be debated in the task force. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Representative Sabin and actually Senator Files have been uh, advocates uh, for an EITC. Uh, I've resisted that, but I'm sure that will be raised in the task force. When the health care task force was formed, you, you came forward with your own kind of slate of proposals on, on Medicaid reform, health care reform. Do you plan on doing the same thing? Uh, probably not to the same extent. Uh, I want to. I hope to be able to continue the focus on the income tax rate, but it was unique in the health care debate because it was so much executive function and DHS, and we had to operate that. Uh, this is a more narrow revenue picture and tax policy. So obviously, 
I'll be watching it very carefully, but I see that more legislatively driven, but uh, I'll be glad to share my thoughts. Has Matt got here yet? The hero's here. I just want to, uh, Matt, come up here if you might. I just want to publicly thank you. I know you just got in from uh, Fort Smith, but uh, uh, your bill, I want you to know, will be the bill that oh, really? it becomes the law because Did I signed it last. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> you, you strategically all the, waited. All in the plan. Well, thank <laughs> but you. Uh, I wanted to thank you for your leadership. On well, it. thank you for your leadership and Senator Hendren and our speaker and our Senate president, Jim Dodson, and the team worked very long and diligently with your group to come to that. So it was a team effort. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that uh, concludes the uh, questions, but thank you all for your uh, participation today and uh, watching the first bill signing.